Uh, we have a special guest tonight, one you might remember, foreign con correspondent Martin Fletcher has been the NBC News Tel Aviv bureau chief. He's been reporting from the Middle East since the 1980s. You may remember him there, and uh, with all due respect, a younger version of him. He's been all around the world, from South Africa, Pakistan, and reported from Gaza. Uh, welcome back to the table. Thank you, Ray. Uh, as it is said, we wish uh, we were here discussing something else, um, but the facts matter, and, and you are here with a lot of experience. So. At the end of this grueling week, I begin with the question, what do you see in what Hamas has done and what Israel is now doing as its counter response? Well, it has to be said that Gaza, that uh, Hamas struck the greatest blow against Israel in one day, I think, in, in Israel's entire history. Hmm. And so I think, you know, they're, 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 they're not, they are now the heroes of the Arab street, one could say, in many parts of the Middle East. The question really is, are they heroes in the streets of Gaza? And I would love to speak to the people in Gaza today and ask them, you're, you've been, you're fleeing from the Israelis, uh, you saw what happened, do you agree with what Hamas did? I would love to ask them that question. That's what I would want to know. Mm. And I haven't, I haven't seen that, an that answered yet. It's an extraordinary blow against Israel. Israel is a, was a, a beaten country for a few hours in shock and, and, and disbelief and feeling vulnerable. And I think now that's turned. Now Israel is all, it's all about wipe out Hamas, whether that's possible or not, we don't know. But it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's a, a, a country in fury at the moment. So with your experience, you don't recall your, your factual view is that there's never been a, a, a strike quite like this in one day against the nation of Israel. No, there really hasn't. I mean, the only comparable thing would be in the 1948 war, in the 1973 war, when Israel was surprised by Egypt and Syria. But this is the idea of 900,000 civilians murdered, many of them in their beds and babies, etc., with all the horrific stuff we've been hearing. No, it, it's, un it's completely unique. And let me tell you, if I may just say, mm -hmm. the suicide bombing campaigns in the 90s and the 2000s, they, I, I thought they, I'd never seen anything as horrific as that. There were about 100 suicide bombs in, in that, at that time. 838 Israelis were killed over those, over those years. I years, thought nothing right. could happen as bad as that. And guess what? They, did, they killed more civilians in one day than all of those suicide bombs put together. Right. You're reminding people of something that was covered at the time, the first and second intifada, the waves of, of terror. Uh, taken, by the way, we should remind people, in part against what was seen as a center-left Israeli leadership that was trying to make peace uh, in the Second Intifada. But, but what you're reminding people there is that all took such a long time, and this happened in a single day. Uh, and so Hamas's end game here is what? We don't really know. Their, their stated end game is to, is to free the, the Palestinian um, prisoners in Israeli jails. There's 5,000 of them. By the way, only 183 of those are from Gaza. The rest are from the West Bank. Mm -hmm. So that's one goal. The other goal, they say, is to stop the Israel act actions in the holy places in, in Jerusalem. But that's a, that's a, that's, this is a, that's out of balance. So what the real end game is, I don't know. I think they've been calling on, on the Arab world to stand up for them. Days of rage are calling for the governments to fight. Will Hezbollah join in? Will they, will they spark a regional war? All these things are possibilities. Um, I think they achieved a success way beyond their expectations. They didn't expect to be able to walk freely into Israel's uh, communities and kill civilians and not have the army turn up for hours and hours in many places. In the communities in the, in the, communities in the south, it took seven to ten hours before, of, of terror before anybody with a gun, an arm, a soldier or a policeman, came to help them. Yeah, you say that and you say that that surprised even Hamas because... Uh, historically, they would have met more formal and armed resistance in those areas. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a highly defended area, but it was a, a tactically, it was a brilliant stroke of Hamas to attack when they did early on a Saturday morning on a Jewish holiday when most of the soldiers were, were away. And they knew also that there was a, a big f a festival going on with thousands of young people right by the very close to the border. So tactically, it was a very smart move. It was a horrific move, but it was a smart move. 
when you look at the Israeli response, which understandably under, under any version of, of military international law, there's a, there's a right of self-defense and a right to respond. There's also great concern, and we just showed some of what's already happening in Gaza. Uh, but when you hear a country say, well, we will eliminate this opponent or enemy, Americans have heard that about various terror groups. We've seen them evolve. Uh, there are sectarian religious motivations underneath these things that make it very hard to root out. Uh, we have something here that is, is it, like so much of this, is a bit uh, sad, but it's also striking. Uh, it's from 2004, and it is you, as a reporter, discussing the then goal to wipe out Hamas leadership. Israeli security sources say they decided last night to destroy the whole Hamas leadership in order to stop the militant Islamic terror campaign against Israel. Israel says it'll kill the whole Hamas leadership. There we were, here we are. Yeah, what could you say? And they said that several times. In fact, after each conflict, there's been six, five or six con uh, mini wars in the last 15, 16 years. <clears throat> They've always said the same thing. They haven't done it. But they never really went in full, they, they, in, in, in the massive way that they appear to be planning to do today. This is a different... Um, um, it's a different measure of combat by, by, a great, by a great deal. If they go in the way they're planning to go in today, they could change things. But they still, they're not going to kill the, all the leaders. They're not going to destroy the idea. The, the, the only area where one could look at and say, well, they could possibly do this, is kill lots of, lots of, the, of the fighters. They apparently killed about 1,500 of these uh, fighters when they came inside Israel. So there was some military success when the Israelis finally took them on. But the idea of destroying Hamas as an idea ain't going to happen. But because Hamas is a political movement, it's possible that they could weaken them so much that the people of Gaza would then say, wait a minute, this is not working with Hamas. Yes, they won the election in 2006. Yes, they kicked out the Fatah government, which is now the government in the West Bank. The people of Gaza could possibly stand up and say, we don't want this and then they could then take on their uh, Hamas leadership and say, politically, we don't want you anymore. And Hamas would be so weakened that maybe they could get there. Right. And as we've reminded viewers, when we talk about the people of Gaza, we're talking about a median age of about 18. So we're talking about the people, but also roughly half the population, uh, younger than many other societies for a variety of reasons, but half that population is people under 18. So the people of Gaza, some of them might be 16 and have an idea about this. Some of them are 10. Uh, and may not yet have an idea about this. To your point, that could cut either way. Uh, the President of the United States is out here uh, dealing with a hostage crisis. Uh, I've also told viewers, uh, any normal week in any part of American history, if this many American hostages were taken and missing, that would be the big story for quite some time. That, in a way, has almost been subsumed uh, because there's so much going on. The president uh, doing a new interview. This is an excerpt from a longer interview that will air this weekend on 60 Minutes. Let's take a look. This is not even human behavior. It's, it's pure barbarism. And we're going to do everything in our power to get them home if we can find them. Based on your knowledge of this conflict, um, when Hamas realizes it has these Americans as it goes over time, is it sorting them? Does it have a different plan for them? Uh, does the United States, uh, which has already reiterated a, a, a commitment not to put boots on the ground, uh, have any clear intelligence understanding of, of the risk facing those Americans? I think that they have, as I said before, I'm sure they exceeded, they succeeded way beyond their wildest dreams. The idea that they would have a couple of dozen American Israeli Jewish hostages, I think for them is a gold mine. I mean, they're not going to let them go easily. And the idea that Israel may find the hostages and rescue them in some kind of military operation, that isn't going to happen either. They couldn't find one Israeli soldier, Gilad Shalit. When Hamas kept, held Gilad Shalit for five years, the Israelis weren't able to find that one guy. They're not going to find 150 hostages in a few days or a couple of weeks. And that, wh why is that? They're in the tunnels. Where are they? Because, they? because Hamas has been planning this for so long. There's about 300 miles of tunnels underneath that tiny, that, that, that tiny area. I mean, the whole, the, whole, the, whole, the whole of the Gaza Strip is about 139 square miles. There's 300 miles, we, as far as we understand, of tunnels. And each one is probably booby-trapped, and they've all got multiple entrances and exits coming from homes and probably hospitals and schools as well. So Israel's going to go down there. I mean, Israel will try to destroy them. One way to destroy them is simply to seal them. But how do you seal a tunnel if there may be hostages down there? We don't know. So it's an extremely delicate task. And um, frankly, 
their only real hope is serious negotiations, and we don't know if Hamas wants to negotiate. But short of negotiations, you think it's a, a protracted uh, war campaign that, that likely goes into the tunnels and however long that takes? It's going to go on for a long time. And the, the, Hamas's dream always has been to entice the Israeli army into a ground war in Gaza. That's what they want. They're prepared for that. The area in northern Gaza that, they've, they've, that the Israelis are telling the people to leave, it's most of Gaza City a huge place. There's two towns, um, Beit Hanun and Beit Lahir. There's a Jabalia refugee camp. I've been in all those places many times. I've been, I've been with, with fighters from Hamas who've been showing me the booby traps in the ground that they've got ready for the, for the Israelis when they come. The other, uh, the other people showed me buildings stocked with lots of ammunition and, and landmines waiting for the Israelis. They want this to happen. The Israelis know that, of course, and they're highly trained, but it's going to be a bitter, long battle. And finally, given all of that experience, um, the utter abject failure that you described uh, of, of Israel to protect itself, uh, at, at, you put it at a historic level, is overseen by someone uh, who rose, Netanyahu, on claims of security. And if you're with him, you will have a more secure, uh, more whatever the word, uh, Israel. Does that failure catch up with him while he's in government or only after they're through this war? Probably after the war. I mean, Israel always unites when there's a war and they try to set aside political differences. But this is clearly a political failure for many reasons that they probably haven't got time to discuss right now. It's a political failure... Uh, the, the country was distracted. The, the Israeli army and generals and security services, the, the secret services, have been warning Netanyahu for about six to eight months that their, that their level of preparation, preparedness is deteriorating because of all the demonstrations in the streets and the, and the government's attention to this question about changing the legal system and reducing the power of the Supreme Court. The country was distracted. The army generals told the prime minister... We're not fully prepared. And the prime minister pushed them aside. And this is the result, is what many Israelis believe. Yeah. And, and we've seen that from, from many experts who, inside Israel who still have its collective defense in mind. Uh, Martin Fletcher, again, we draw on your experience at a tough time. We thank you.